Illinois Stories is brought to you by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by the support of viewers like you. Thank you. Hello, welcome to Illinois Stories. I'm Mark McDonald in Newman, Illinois, in front of the Strybach Building. This building is on the National Register of Historic Places. Ignatius Strybach fought in the Civil War, came back to Newman after the war, and built this as a blacksmith shop. Now, after 145 some years, it's a blacksmith shop again. Heather, what are you making? A fire poker. A fire poker? Yes. Okay. You got, you got it flattened out a little bit, right? Yeah, it's going to come up to a point, and that's going to be the barb that comes off of it. Okay, so you got to get it hot again? Yep. Okay. How long is it going to have to sit in there? A few more seconds. A few more seconds, and then you're going to put the bend in it? Well, I'm going to keep working on the point for the barb. And then once I've got that where I want it, I'm going to fold it to make the point. And then you have to forge the point so that it'll come out ah. to a nice... Okay, all right. Well, when you're ready, let's see stage two. with a hammer in your hand, aren't you? Yes. <laughs> it's a good stress reliever. <laughs> that looks good to me. Eventually, I can put it back in the, I can put it in the water, cool it down, uh -huh. and then take a grinding wheel to it and shine it up and put a better point on it. Come on out here for me. Okay. A lot of people would be surprised to find out that the latest blacksmith in this 145 year old shop is a young female. How old are you? 20. You're 20. You just mm -hmm. turned 20? Mm hmm. Okay. And you're a student? Yep. And you got interested in blacksmithing because you're a farrier. Mm hmm. You, sh you learned how to shoe horses. Yep. How's that going? It's all right. It's a little slow in the beginning. Mm hmm. And you just got to work your way up to getting more clients and getting better. and. Working on your business. You shoe and trim your own horses, mm -hmm. right? And, and that's probably what got you interested in this, right? Yeah. Is you own horses and yep. you love them, don't you? Mm -hmm. And you went to the Midwest Horseshoeing School in Springfield, or outside yep. of Springfield there. Mm -hmm. And uh, you finished their semester. Mm -hmm. And now you're ready to go get your certification, I guess, huh? Working on it. Yeah. You got to do a lot of practicing to get to your certification. It's a yeah. very difficult test. In the meantime, though, you find this place in Newman. Mm -hmm. You're from Newman. Mm -hmm. So you knew about this place, but it had been closed for years, hadn't mm -hmm. it? What got you wanting to do this? Well, my mom is very... She's mom. <laughs> <laughs> She's a mom. <laughs> so she heard about it, and when I was in school, I liked to make a lot of not-so-much horseshoes. <laughs> I would start making things that I could bring home and show my mom and all stuff, all kinds of stuff like that. So I would... Um, just kind of tinker with stuff up there at the school while we weren't making horseshoes. Yeah. And then she liked some of the stuff that I was making, so she talked to the owners about this place, and we just kind of took it from there. He sh the, one of the owners, um, Kim McGee, he showed me around, and I thought it was the greatest thing in the world, so here we are, and 
this place is on the National Register of, Register of Historic Places. Mm -hmm. It's always been a blacksmith shop. Yep. And the owners like to see the fact that it remains a blacksmith shop. Mm -hmm. huh? You know, during this program, we're going to get to meet the last blacksmith who was here, mm -hmm. Charlie uh, Keller. Keller. Um, and he, he's practiced in here for 25 years. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and then it was vacant for a while, and now here, here you come along, mm -hmm. and maybe you'll put 25 years in here. Maybe you'll become maybe a master, <laughs> you know? Maybe you'll become a master blacksmither. I hope to. Now, is there more work to do on that poker? Of course. <laughs> okay, let's see, let's see what, where you go from here. See if we can get a little bit more heat on there. Yeah, I took you away from your work, didn't I? <laughs> wow. Okay, so this is coal, right? And yes. you've got a... You've got an electric uh, blower. Yes. But other than the electric blower, this is exactly the way they used to do it, isn't it? Yep. Wow, that is some heat. I'm sweating. <laughs> well, it's, you know, here we are, it's August, and this is probably the hottest place in town. Yep, yep. it is. <laughs> it heats up the whole room, so it's nice in the winter. It's great in the winter, yeah. You'll love it here in the winter time. Mm -hmm. Of course, you go to school, too, don't you? Yeah. So you've got uh, you've got that to deal with in the winter time, but uh... a little more, okay. And when I say you go to school, you go you're in community college. Yep, Parkland up at, College. Up at, up at Parkland, huh? What are you studying? Uh, business management. Maybe you'll get to manage your blacksmithing business. I Maybe hope that's to. what you get to do. Yeah. Maybe that's what you get to do. The, the ferrying and the blacksmithing kind of go together. They do, don't they? So yeah. I, I hope to make it one business. Did, did the a blacksmith used to make horseshoes, I guess, right? Yeah. So they, that was always had been twin. Yeah, I, I, to me, it, a blacksmith was a horseshoer back then. Mm -hmm. that, that's where it all came from. Yeah. So. That's good. Ooh, okay, good. how soft it gets if it's hot enough, right? Wow. Mm -hmm. I'm going to straighten it out a little bit. This is the hard part, getting it all straight. Okay, so do you see where we're going with it? I do. This will be forged out into a point. Mm -hmm. This will be curved, mm -hmm. and that'll be the barb. Right. And then you have your fire poker. The last thing to do is make it pretty. Okay, and so what you'll do, that barb gives you a chance to grab the logs and to move yeah. them around the way you want to. Yeah. Okay. okay, talk about making it pretty. Let's walk over here and see something that you've made okay. recently, okay? This is very imaginative, especially it's it's kind of fitting that a, that a farrier would have, <laughs> would have made this. Yeah. Now, what is it supposed to be? Is it, it's not a table. It's a cane rack for walking canes. Ah, or umbrellas maybe. Yeah. You could use an umbrella stand. Anything with a hook on it, really. Okay, and so this is a bunch of horseshoes. Are they welded together? Um, they are bent into the shape of a teardrop, and then where they connect on each side is welded. Okay, so you had to, the, the, the blacksmithing and you bent them, mm -hmm. right? And then you welded them. You also do welding here. Mm -hmm. I'll be darned. What about the base? The base, that was the most difficult part. I wanted to have a good looking base, mm -hmm. but it's very hard with a small welder like I have to put a piece of flat stock onto a rod. Mm -hmm. You would have to just weld them together, you know, just around, around, yeah. the, around the circle. Yeah. Well, I tried that and it didn't work. <laughs> huh. So I came up with a system, you can see it up here too, it's the same thing as up here. I took four pieces of flat stock and made kind of um, a cone shape mm -hmm. that comes down and you weld to the rod here uh -huh. and then to the base. Mm -hmm. Well, I did that and it kind of looked a little ugly. It was ugly? It was ugly. Not ugly now. Well, that's where the grass and the yeah. cattails come in. And you bent and you bent those by, by, by blacksmithing. You would mm -hmm. bend those and those were stock and you just bent them over mm -hmm. to make them look like grass. Yep, I would flowers. cut them. It, it's regular, yeah. regular stock. It's really thin, 
And so I would take my angle grinder and cut it to an angle, you know, because yeah. grass isn't square. And um, then I would just take it on my horn of my anvil and bend it on my anvil <laughs> and bend it over. And I, I still thought it looked a little bland, yeah. so I, I threw some cattails in there. And all that is is round stock that I've shaped to look like yeah. little hot dogs, kind of. Yeah, yeah. And then welded the rest of the pieces That's on neat. there. That's really neat. So you, once once your people see this, they'll bring, when they're, they're going to order some other things. From you. <laughs> they're going to want some things. I can tell. Maybe canes, maybe stuff yep. like that. Well, listen. I want you to go back to work okay. because that fire is good and hot. Michelle. Not every mother has a 20-year-old daughter who is like roughing up metal and, you know, blacksmithing. No, you're that's, right. That, that's you're a right. real hands-on kind of profession. It is. It is. It? What's, it, what's it like uh, when you tell people that my daughter's a blacksmith or my daughter shoes horses? What kind of response do you get? I, people are amazed, and, and I'm so proud of her, so I, I'm telling everybody all the time, so I'm used to it. And people are just amazed that, that she's so young and that she's doing such, uh, she's in a field that's male dominated. Yeah. There are very few female farriers and probably even fewer female blacksmiths. Yeah. So and especially at the age of 20. At the age of 20, and, yes. And how many 20 year olds have an interest in a 145 year old probably building not very many. and wanting to keep the old art alive? You probably know? not very many. Not and very that's many. why I'm so proud of her. This is a small town. It doesn't have a lot to offer for young people. Yeah. And she's here trying to bring something back to life that's dead and gone. It and is really interesting. It is. It's it very is. interesting. Very it's interesting to watch her work. It is. Because, and, and thank goodness she's strong because she's beating that metal yep. to death. Yep. Well, she harder does. Harder than I get hit it. I she guess. does. I like to come up here and take pictures of her work because it yeah. fascinates me too. Yeah. Yeah. This is an interesting place. I want you to give me a mini tour. Okay. Now, I know you're not a historical expert. Nope. But you're as close as we have in this in this building today. Let's start over there at the uh, at the at the chimney. Because when Mr. Strybeck built this place in the 1870s, he came back from the Civil War, right? Right. He was a German immigrant, right. fought in the Civil War, came to Newman, and built a blacksmith shop in the 1870s. Right. And this is what, and it's still the same way it was. Except for the electric motor, the fan, yes, everything is exactly the yep. way it was. Yep. And, and what he liked to do, he had a cute habit. He had a, a son. And he used to, every day on his birthday, every year on his birthday, right. he would etch his son's his birthday. birthday into one of these bricks, right? Yep. Yep. And you can see where, where there's, it's still there. Yeah. It's still there. And that was his son was Fritz, right? And right. Fritz would later become the blacksmith here, huh? Yes, he took over in 1916 until 1932. Now let's walk around here a little bit. Let's get around this anvil. Okay, the, the, I assume these are original bricks. These bricks were here. Yes. Um, and it's really cool what they've done. They got a little walkway here. There's an area upstairs that was, he may have lived up there for all we know, I guess. That's possible, uh, yes. Yeah. There, there was probably living quarters up there. And these are these are side-by-side -side buildings. There was another blacksmith. Was there a blacksmith working next door? There was a machine shop next door at one point. And uh, so they were, they probably traded or, mm -hmm. you know, helped each other out they in did. some way they or did. another. They did, they worked and, together. And this old, this old table, I love this because if you look here, th those tools behind there, those were all here. They were all left here, weren't they? They were left here. They were left here. They're original tools that were made and used by Ignatius Strybeck and probably his son Fritz. And there's a lot of history in this building. Oh my goodness. And it's, just look over our head. Look, look up here. This, the chains and, mm -hmm. and, and things I don't know the names of. Tools exactly. that, and these, these were, when you came in here, they were still here, weren't they? <laughs> it's remarkable. This is the original leather apron that Ignatius Strybeck wore when he was a blacksmith here. Uh-huh. Yep. And, and, they, and they, probably, he probably made that hanger. He probably did. <laughs> they still have the rings on the wall from where they used to tie the horses up. Uh-huh. And this line shaft up here, this is okay, part of the original let's, line let's shaft. let us catch up there. You're talking about that, the, we, the wheel and the shaft. Okay, right. right. And um, the, the first electric uh, steam generated power plant was started here in this, this blacksmith shop. It mm -hmm. only lasted for about a year, but that was part of the original mm -hmm. uh, power plant that was here, and it was the model for later electrification in the county. You know, in, in, the, uh, in the historical context of this business and this building, along comes in the 1970s, along comes a guy named Charlie Keller, Keller mm -hmm. right? And he takes an interest in this, so it was abandoned for a while. He opens it up again and becomes the blacksmith, the resident blacksmith, yes. long before your daughter uh, probably ever, well, before she even came she, along. She even came along, um, yeah. So we get a chance to meet him, too, because he, he was a professor in Champaign. Mm -hmm. 
and he came down to talk to us yeah. today. So it's, it's, a, it's a real gift to be able to talk to him. He's a and wealth of you. knowledge. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, he's a wealth of knowledge. He's been very inspirational to Heather yeah. and very, very supportive of her, too, him and his wife both. Charlie Keller, for 145 years, this Stryback shop has been a blacksmith shop. Right. And it was vacant some of the time, but for about 25 of those years, you were the resident blacksmith here. Right. And how did an anthropologist, a professor at the U of I, become a blacksmith and want to work in this shop? Uh, well, I had been trained as an archaeologist, and uh, I had excavated a lot of tools that I didn't know the use of. And uh, I was also interested in how people w really use tools. What mm -hmm. was the decision-making process? Uh, how do you decide when your project is done? Things like that. And I knew that I couldn't find that out from published literature. And uh, I decided I should find out how to do some kind of craft activity <laughs> outside of an academic uh, framework. So, so, so the old, so the old saying, those who can do and those teachers, <laughs> how's that go? Teachers, <laughs> those who can't teach, didn't apply like to that. you. What you wanted to do is actually go out and see how things were. Right, right. And you became a blacksmith. So I had a sabbatical and uh, I decided, what could I do that I don't know about mm -hmm. and that I want to do? I rejected a couple of things because they were, weaving made me nervous. <laughs> Uh, but uh, I had an opportunity to apprentice to a blacksmith in Santa Fe, New mm -hmm. Mexico. So I went down there and spent uh, my sabbatical and then the following summer uh, working with him. Yeah. Neat. So you found out you liked blacksmithing. You liked being able to burn yourself and pound things, right? <laughs> well, there is that. <laughs> You're holding a couple of these tools. This shop was full of tools that were originally in here, and right. they're still here. Right. What, what do you have in your hand right. here? Uh, when I got here, there were things that I was not familiar with uh, and that I had to find out about. Mm -hmm. uh, this is one pair of tongs. I'll hold this one for that you. Are, you can... That are different than these right. because I... you can't pick things up very easily with these big blocks mm -hmm. on the end of the ends of the reins. Well, I f found out as I looked at this that these blocks had been forge welded on here mm -hmm. so that these were, this is a standard pair of, of handles. And it turns out that these tongs are not for picking things up. Mm -hmm. They're to be heated in the fire and then you can put a bandsaw blade that needs to be soldered together in between the, the oh, hot the hot pieces. Okay. It's like a vice, huh? So it's like a it vice. It works like a vice, yeah. yes. And this is also what's in here. This is an, uh, an old uh, shoeing, shoeing tool, uh, I guess. And huh? these are, are uh, farrier's clinch tongs, mm -hmm. as Heather was saying, to bend the shoe nails mm -hmm. uh, over after you. Mm -hmm. Through. Yeah, yeah. You know, in those 25 years that you were working in this shop, you had an opportunity to make a number of really gorgeous items. Hold this one for me and describe how you made that one. Uh, this is a, a modern design ladle. Um, I bought four inch discs, copper discs, um, and then sunk them into a mm -hmm. hollow to, to uh, shape them and then forged a handle mm -hmm. out of a piece of bar stock and riveted, uh, yeah, riveted yeah. together. And that's a modern design. Yeah. You wanted that. Now this is yeah. not a modern design. This is... Right. This is a late 18th century style toasting fork which uh, has been filed, it's been whitesmithed mm -hmm. so that it's shiny and then it's got some decorative file work mm -hmm. on here. Uh, it's the kind of thing that were, um, uh, that was given as wedding presents uh, yeah. in 1790s, yeah. for instance. Blacksmiths often, uh, they stamp their, their mark and yours is yes. KL. 
Right. And there it is. It's stamped right into the handle. You can see the KL, and that's what you did on a lot of the items that you made. I'm going to show one more item that you made. Sure. Because it's uh, what you prided yourself in doing was able to make period period things. Right. And this is an axe head. This is a 1830s, 1840s, uh, so-called Kentucky axe uh, that's been made by putting a groove in two halves and then welding a plug back here and then welding a third piece of steel mm -hmm. for the cutting edge and then squeezing the whole business together. You became pretty well known in the 1990s working in this shop. Here's a, a copy of this old house. And if we look inside this magazine, we find Charlie Keller in the uh, Stryback, in the Stryback uh, shop standing next to some of the old equipment. Right. You still look good, Charlie. You look pretty much the same. <laughs> <laughs> That's terrific. You're kind. Yeah. And then there's another picture here. This is really cool. I really like this one because it shows you at work, boy, with those, with the flame and the forge coming up around your uh, tools. Yeah. That's yeah. very dramatic. That is nifty. Yeah. I, I like that T-shirt. It's one that my kids gave me. It says, <coughs> closet preppy on it. <laughs> That's you, huh? That's you. Hey, let me ask you this. You worked in this shop for 25 years. Now there's a 19-year-old girl rejuvenating blacksmithing in here. What's, right. your, what's your reaction to that? Oh, I, it's <laughs> great to have, uh, to have the shop back alive again, you know. Um, uh, there are a lot of ghosts in, the, in this shop. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're the ghosts of the people who worked here. And uh, now it's going to have another ghost. Uh, that she's adding to it. Well, thank you, Charlie. It's been a pleasure meeting you. My pleasure. Remarkable how pliable that is. Okay. What's next? Do you have to dip it in water or anything? And that is that done? Mm -hmm. Okay. Do, do you would you normally dip it in the water now? Mm -hmm. Let's do, will it steam for us or does it? Maybe. Oh yeah. Shh. <laughs> okay. Okay. Give, give us another look at that. Real, hold it real still for us so we can get a good look at it. Now that. That twist, that's just for decoration, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It looks cool. Yeah. It looks really cool. And it doesn't weaken it. It's just as strong as, as the metal would yep. be otherwise, huh? OK, there's your fire poker. Perfect. All you got to do is make the tip prettier and more yeah. functional, straighten it out a little bit. Straighten it out a little bit. And you know what? I, I noticed when we were talking to Charlie, he talked about whitesmithing a little bit. Mm -hmm. And you had not heard that term. Yeah. But what you can do with all of your products, I guess, is you can file those down till they're till they're shiny. Yeah. And then you've become a whitesmith. Right. And the stuff looks cool. Yeah. It? Did you look, get a look at his, some of his Yeah, those stuff? are really cool. Yeah, yeah. You, you'll be able to do that someday. Yeah. <laughs> someday. <laughs> well, talk to, talk to me about being a student and having time to do this, and how are you going to learn? Who are you going to learn from to do this? I mean, unless you take classes. Sometimes I'm up here at two o'clock in the morning, just trying to figure something out, just making something that you know somebody wants tomorrow or next week or whatever that I need to make now. And I've yeah. been busy all day, or it's too hot to be in here with the forge, and it's cooler at night, so I come in here. I'm yeah. here at two, three o'clock in the morning, yeah. and. So you don't have you don't have a tutor though. You don't have anybody no. who who's teaching you how to do this. You're having to figure it out. Yep. That's kind of a tall order. YouTube helps a lot. You, does it really? <laughs> yeah. So you can, there's little tutorials on there. I've noticed that there's other things, but blacksmithing too. Mm -hmm. Remarkable. You can find everything on YouTube. That's remarkable. Well, um, I also took a class with a guy named Tom Willoughby. He lives in Indiana, and he is the most amazing blacksmith I've ever met. Mm -hmm. He makes some of the craziest stuff, and. I, I took a class with him. I was there for about three days, and we made some really cool stuff. And he's I, just like Charlie. I asked him a million questions, yeah. and we, I learned a lot. Yeah. You know, if Charlie's health was a little better, 
I think he'd want to spend some time here. I, know I think he, he would. would love to be back in here. I know here. he would. Especially since there's a sign of life here. You know yeah. what I mean? This place is alive again. Yeah, I wish he could. Yeah. It'd be great. Well, listen, thank you so much. I don't want to take it. Your fire's going out. You better tend to That's that okay. fire. I don't. <laughs> thank you and to your mom for letting us come in. We really appreciate it. And the You're people welcome. of Newman for, for, letting us, uh, for letting us hang out here today. Well, thank you. So here in Newman on the square, the, uh, the, the smell of uh, the coal forge and the sound of that hammer hitting the anvil is alive again on the square in Newman after 145 years. With another Illinois story in Newman, I'm Mark McDonald. Thanks for watching. Illinois Stories is brought to you by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by the support of viewers like you. Thank you. For a DVD copy of the program you've just seen, send 1995 to Network Knowledge, P.O. Box 6248, Springfield, Illinois 62708. Be sure to include the program name, subject, and when the program aired. You can also order with your credit card by calling 800-232-3605.